Paul. The Honorable President of the Treasury Board. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I see Mr. Mm -hmm. the uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. This chamber to address these uh, very weighty and important issues uh, uh, for Canada and on behalf of my constituents in Perry, San Muskoka. What I want to do it with my uh, brief time uh, standing is uh, try to give my perspective on four basic questions that I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, frame the debate in the way that it should be framed. Uh, and this, this pertains to the Islamic State, ISIL, ISIS, whatever, uh, whatever moniker you want to use. First of all, what is their purpose? Secondly, how are they doing? Thirdly, how do we respond? And in the fourth place, what if we didn't? And I think that by answering those questions, it certainly encapsulates the reason why I will be supporting the motion later on this evening. Firstly, what is their purpose? Uh, Le Mouvement Jihad. The international jihadi movement has declared war on Canada, against Canada, against our values, against our citizens, against the citizens of the West. This international jihadist ideology uh, were the first mover, and they were the ones who declared that Canada was an enemy to their purposes, that our values were antagonistic to their purposes. And this makes this a matter of national security here, as well as our humanitarian interest uh, in uh, the sphere of their operations in the Middle East. So what is their purpose? Quite frankly, they've, they've stated their purpose quite clearly. Uh, they want mm -hmm. to establish an international uh, jihadist uh, caliphate, uh, and, of course, one can only look at the, uh, the example that they are setting in the territory that they currently control uh, of beheadings, of murders, of, of, of crushing minorities, particularly Christian minorities, but not exclusively, other Muslim groupings as well. And so that is, we, we look to not only their words in identifying the national interest, but we look to their deeds. And their deeds are contrary to humanity. Their deeds are contrary uh, to our national interest in the safety of our citizens. And that is their purpose. Their purpose is clearly enunciated uh, by their leadership uh, and by their ruthless actions to date. So then we go on to step two. How are they doing? Well, Mr. Speaker, they are recruiting. They have money. They have organization. Uh, they have territory, uh, and uh, these are things that uh, are uh, helping them in achieving their jihadist, terrorist, internationalist goals. Now, my, my friend, the Honourable Member, I was here in the chamber when the Honourable uh, Minister of Justice was uh, explaining that we have had success to date, and we have had success to date, in being part of a 60-member coalition. Uh, that it has had some success in degrading their ability to achieve their purposes. There is no doubt about that, and nothing I am saying detracts from that record to date. But I think we all agree, and this is why we are standing in this place debating in favour of the resolution on this side of the House, that uh, those goals are not completely accomplished yet. And so we have to stick to those goals, because they are still recruiting, they still have the financial means to project their terror. Uh, they still have uh, an organization which uh, exists and in some parts of the region are growing. Uh, and, of course, they still have uh, their mission, which is not only within the sphere of their current influence, but is an inter internationalist mission. So, and uh, I think uh, one honorable member mentioned, uh, I think it was the honorable member uh, from the Liberal Party mentioned their control of Mosul which is, you know, that's the size of Vancouver. Uh -huh. People, th these, are not, these are not individuals in tents in the desert. This is a large city that they do still control. And we can only hope that that will only be for a short time longer. But that tells you that this mission is still important, that it is yet to be completely accomplished. And that is why we have to be part of that mission. And also because their mission is so international, it extends 
to disrupting our way of life here in Canada. It is clear that uh, this is not just a local mission in the Middle East. It is clear that part of their ideology extends to projecting their force, projecting their terror, projecting their violence on our peaceable shores as well. That leads to the third question, Mr. Speaker, how do we respond? Well, first of all, I believe that we must respond with moral clarity. And the fact of the matter is that uh, because of the purpose that uh, this group of international jihadists have and because of the means by which they are deploying against us and against innocent civilians, both in this country and overseas, then, of course, I believe that the moral argument is that we do have to respond, we do have to continue with the mission. And I believe that we have to extend the mission. There's no point in continuing the mission in one region, that is to say within Iraq, and not being part of the mission in Syria. The two are interlinked. Certainly uh, the jihadists, the Islamic State, do not see any difference or differentiation in borders. And so our role and responsibility is to be part of this 60-member coalition in all areas of activity in Syria and Iraq. And the way we contribute is, of course, with uh, the Royal Canadian Air Force and with the training that we're doing with the Peshmerga. And, of course, let me repeat, as has been endlessly repeated, through our humanitarian mission and aid uh, to those who are in distress and are fleeing from these uh, murderous individuals. And so we do respond. And we will respond, and that's what this mission is all about. That leads me to the fourth and final question that should be on our minds and, and on our lips. What if we didn't respond? What if we took the advice of certain members of the opposition in this place and others who are helpfully providing their advice uh, on the other side of this argument throughout the country? Well, uh, clearly uh, what will happen is we will, be not, we will not be part of a group of people, a group of nations, that are seeking to end the uh, genocidal violence that is occurring overseas, the beheadings, uh, the uh, persecution of minority groups, Christians, other Muslims, and of course uh, the, the absolute deprivation that is going along with that. That's clear. But it also probably means more attacks here. If we fail to degrade their ability to project their violence, it means that the national security of our nation, Canada, is compromised. And why do I say that? I say that because uh, they have made it clear that if they have the means, they will continue to attack us at home. That is their goal. That is part of how they see their millenarian uh, mission. And so for those who say that we are provoking them with our actions, I would reply that we would actually provoke them more with inaction, Mr. Speaker. And that's why it's important that we, that we do something rather than do nothing. Throughout Canada's history, brave Canadians have fought for what is right, despite considerable difficulties. And now is not the time to turn our backs on that tradition. Counts our enviable and honorable history, where we work with allies to preserve the values that Canadians uh, desire and expect, and also to preserve the national security of our nation, Mr. Speaker. For all of these reasons, Mr. Speaker, for the questions that I have posed and for the answers that I have given, I intend to support the motion. Yeah.